and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Amanda. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're not new, I'm so glad you're here too. Y'all know that. But I'm not going to voice over this video. I am going to sit down at the end of this video and read my devotional to you guys face to face and tell a little bit about me and just kind of give a little bit of my testimony, how I've got where I am. And that's a lot of talking. So I figured I would just let y'all listen to the music here. There's not a whole lot to explain about sanding down cabinets and painting them. And I told you in the last video what colors I was using and all of that and that cabinet that I'm painting there. That's Armory. I had opened the wrong paint and painted that cabinet before I realized I had opened the wrong color. So anyway, if you're not here for the devotional, you can click off when the makeover part's done. But I just wanted to sit down, read my devotional to you guys. And after last night's live, just kind of explain a few things. And yeah, so there you go. But I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you guys enjoy the devotional at the end. I feel like it's a good one. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Stop thinking about your day and night 
I can tell what's wrong or right Should I go without saying goodbye? All I know is I need to be Somewhere else to set me free I don't know what to do now Need to figure it out but I don't know how I hope the wind will carry me And take me away to where I should be Just cause you're lonely You know you're killing me slowly 
nah. Maybe I'm yours, maybe I'm not. I think about it way too much, and every single thought is making me. Insecurities tearing me apart and making me sleep and making me sleep back. Oh, oh, oh. yourself.
Let myself again and keep thinking of you. You. You're not.
I'm trying my best to hold on It's not easy but I'm feeling stronger with you And the days don't work out the way I thought they would But today's is little people the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19.10 When our bodies are tired and our spirits match, it's easy to look at the great big world and feel very small. We try not to pay attention to numbers, but we do. We see how few likes we get on social media or watch promotions fly by to land on others. We wonder why we're spinning our wheels. Why are the big bucks heading in another direction? And then sometimes it hits us, I'm just a little person. Little people have a great value to Jesus. Sooner or later, all of us look at the world and compare. The scope of our tiny place in a big world shrinks in our minds as insignificant. And we head to bed wondering if all the rush and hard work has any worth or purpose at all. Jesus came for all. He is our salvation and significance. Little people with a great God have a divine purpose. Think about that today. What makes you feel insignificant and how does that affect your rest? How does God's purpose change those thoughts? So during my live last night, there were a lot of you guys that asked me how I got the nerve to put myself out on YouTube, why I started, how I did it, all those things. And I did answer your questions. I think I answered everybody's questions. I wanted to get my story out there and that's just how I did it. It was going to be a couple videos and done. It turned into a platform for me to be able to to tell my story and I often wondered why I had to go through that and then I was quickly reminded that God doesn't put you through something for no reason there was a reason there was a purpose and maybe my story could help somebody else and it has I really believe it has when I left and moved here I was hurting my kids were hurting there were times that I felt so sorry for them that I, I did cry I would get up in the mornings, I would take my kids to school or get them ready for this or that and it was all I could do to hold it together. As soon as I got out of the car or as soon as I could come into the bedroom or bathroom or something, I would cry until I couldn't. But I would look my kids in the eye and I would say, there's nothing that's through at us that's a surprise to God. If he's allowed it to happen, it's for a reason. He's got us. It's going to be okay. At the end of the day, we're still standing. There's nothing that's going to knock us down. We're big girls. We're going, we're going to make it. We're going to be fine. I would say that to them, and then I would turn around and not even know that it was true. I was mad at God. I was pissed off, to be honest with you. Why does this one have this perfect marriage and mine's fell apart or... And I've had a lot of people even message me and ask me why, what happened. And they were like, I'm not being nosy. I'm just curious. And I understand that. When you put yourself out there, people are going to ask questions. We just didn't get along. He was, um, I felt like he didn't treat me right. And he'll, pro he'll tell you that he didn't treat me right. I wasn't perfect. I didn't treat him right either. I would lash back out at him. When I left, I was hurt. My kids were hurt. At the same time, he was hurt. He sat in an empty house. You know, he would fuss about not being able to walk in and sit down on the couch because it's full of girls and it was loud and it was messy and all that stuff. And he went from all of the chaos to an empty house. And nothing will bring a man to his knees like an empty house will. And I don't want to tell you that. Um, he treated, he, he's older than me. I felt like he treated me like a kid. He has left a chore list for me before. He has left to go to work and left me a chore list. And you can bet your sweet hind in that didn't get done. But anyway, we just, but it was just bad. My kids were hurting. They didn't need to hear the fussing. They never knew if we were going to be happy and get along or if we were going to be at each other. It just got bad. I felt like I needed to leave. I left. Best, best thing I could have ever done we get along so good now, help so much. But I know a lot of you have messaged me and said you're going through it, you're hurting so bad, and it does hurt. And you're gonna have some really hard days. There were days that I didn't think I could make it. My heart physically ached. Um, I will say it gets better, and kids adjust, and 
it'll get easier for them. It will. When I left, I told Alden, I said, I don't want a set schedule for our kids. If my kids are with me and they need their dad, they're going to have their dad. And if they're with you and they need their mom, I want them to be able to be with me. I don't want it to be, I didn't want my kids hurting, needing their dad. And then me look at them and say, no, it's not his day. I'm not doing that to my kids. I'm not how it's always worked. He's always been an amazing provider, an amazing dad. The only thing I'll say as far as him being a dad or me being a mom as far as parenting is that we were really hard on Kennedy. She's at ETSU playing softball. She's an amazing kid, amazing ball player, but we pushed her. She was never good enough and she was, but that's how he made her feel. We rode her tail and yeah, look, I mean, she's playing division one ball now and I know we helped her get there, but we killed her confidence. It was ne she felt like she was never good enough, and she'll tell you that too. And we did hurt her in that way. Um, you know, I have a huge story to tell. I could probably write a book. I quit my job at the end of the school year. I didn't sign, or I didn't renew my contract. So we threw this YouTube video out there, and it was just going to be a one. Th it wasn't a job. It wasn't going to be a job for me. We didn't even think about making money or getting money. We didn't even know how it worked. So, anyway, here we are. I went live last night. After my live, I felt very small. I feel very insignificant or irrelevant on YouTube a lot of times. Um, there are times that I do want to quit. Um, it's a lot of time. There's times that I'll work all day long on a makeover. I'll edit till midnight. I'll get back up at six o'clock, make my thumbnail, voice it over, post, go right back to work. And it is a lot of work. It does pay off. If you stay consistent, it does pay off and it does provide for my family and I make decent money doing it. God will pitch you places you never expected to be. And that's what he's done with me. I would have never thought that I would be on any sort of platform helping anybody or making any amount of money or anything like that. In my wildest dreams, I would have never believed I was here. I wanted to do this a long time ago. There was a time that, you know, just being a diabetic, struggling with my weight, different things, I wanted to start a YouTube channel. I wanted to help people in that way. Um, Alden told me, no. No, we're not doing that. He's a very private person. No, we're not doing it. I was, or you're not doing it. I was like, okay. So I didn't. After I left him and this turned into just a hobby or something for me. He said to me one day, he said, I'm proud of you for doing it. Even when I told you no, I'm proud of you. You know, you did it anyway. And sometimes you have to do it anyway. If you, if there's something you feel like you need to do to better yourself or for yourself, or if you feel like God's tagging at you to start a YouTube channel or to go volunteer somewhere, just, you know, anything, do it. You'll never know who you can touch, who you'll reach. I get messages from people that say, you've helped me do this, or what's your suggestion about this? How should I do this? Or, you know, what should I do to my kitchen or something like that? And it's people I would have never dreamed that would watch, like people that I know. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like, it's kind of embarrassing because I'm like, oh man, I didn't think about them watching, you know, but I feel like I'm helping people. It's not about the money, and like I said, the money's nice. I don't count on this as income. If I didn't make any money from doing this, I would still do it because I enjoy it. I know a lot of people on YouTube that don't make enough money to even waste their time doing it, but they do it because they feel like they're helping people. They've made friends. They want to stay connected with people, and they're just passionate about it, and that's where you have to be to do this. You have to be passionate about it. I'm the type of person, just to, even to read a book, if it doesn't catch my attention, first page, second page, I'm done. I'm going to lay it down. I have to be all in or nothing. If it's something I don't enjoy, I'm not going to continue with it. I'm not. I'm just, that's my personality. If I'm, I have to love it to do it. And I love doing this. I feel like I have a reason. My kids are older. I've got three that's grown and out of the house. I only have Allison left and she's 12. I've got a child that's been married almost four years and she's 
pregnant with my first grandbaby. I feel like I'm in a different season of life. I'm in a season of life that I feel lost. I felt like I had just raised my kids and I had work jobs here and there, but I felt like all I had ever done with my life is just be a mom. And that's all I ever wanted to be and I'm fine with that. I wouldn't change it if I could. I have a purpose now. I feel like I have a reason. When I go help somebody paint their house or help, help them do their kitchen cabinets or this or that, or even just somebody messages me and asks for advice, I feel needed. And that's what I ask God for. And be careful what you ask God for because he'll give it to you, but he'll give it to you in a way you didn't expect it. I remember when I quit my job randomly, spur of the moment, told him I wouldn't be back, quit my job. I came home and after it set in, I thought, what in the crap am I doing with my life? I have left my husband. I don't have a job. My kids are grown and gone. They don't need me. And I just felt like my life didn't even matter. And when I say that I didn't even want to live anymore, I just didn't feel like I had a reason or a purpose. I kept telling myself, I have Allison. And if it wasn't for her, I don't know where I'd be. When she's grown and leaves, I don't know what I'll do. I'll have a grandbaby maybe to keep me busy or whatever. You all keep me busy. When I started doing YouTube, I got up, I got to moving, I cleaned, I edited, I posted, and I started all over again the next day. And it got me up off the couch. It kept me active. I lost weight. Yes, I took Monjaro, but getting up and moving, I don't give all the credit to Monjaro. But it gave me something to do, and I felt like I had a reason, especially when I started getting messages from you all, like you've helped me, then yes, or I'm going through it too. That helped me. It saved me, honestly. It gave me a reason. It gave me a purpose. I remember begging God for direction, like what do I do? Lord, I feel like I've made such a mess of my life. And sometimes I feel like he allows things to happen to you to put you there. So you have no other choice but to turn to him. And that's what happened with me. I asked God to give me a purpose. Here's my life. Do something with it. And this is where I ended up. If he puts a roadblock up, I'll stop. If, he, if I woke up this morning and I really had a heavy heart that he wanted me to do something different, then I would be done. But when I read that devotional this morning, I thought, that's me. I'm just a little person. You know, I'm, I'm this big, but God uses people this big, you know, just like the saying, he doesn't call the anointed. He anoints the called. I'm nobody. I really am just a nobody. And, but yeah, I feel like he blesses me more than he's blessed anybody. I don't deserve any bit of his goodness. I don't share my devotional or share how good God's been to me to brag, to act like I'm something that I'm not because I'm nothing. I do what I do and I share my devotional because there's been so many days I woke up and it's all I can do just to get out of the bed because I felt like my life was so turned upside down that there was no fixing it. I know what that feels like. I want to help people. I want to show people that there is hope and it does get better and it does get easier and that if you'll ask him for guidance and you'll fully put your life in his hands he will guide you he'll lead you he has a plan for your life ask him what it is that's what happened with me that's how i am where i am that's my story anyway remember i love you jesus loves you so much no matter what he loves you unconditionally and i'll see you guys tomorrow Wandering and fading, I know There's something more than this I think I am ready For doing some changing, oh God There's something more than this You can have all the world Shows through the darkness A fire burning in the night Be a hope for the world so broken Be a front to the lonely, the dark that
already showed me Make the broken things new Yeah, the only hope for you and I Be a friend to the lonely, the joy that he showed.